Ok. Fala pessoal, tudo tranquilo? Aqui quem fala é Alexandre Weber e dessa vez estamos aqui com cinco perguntas para, só que dessa vez, internacional. So it's going to be five questions to Jake, also known as Alicais, and also known as what you, your, what's your nickname? Yo? Uh, Saden Raken. Saden Raken. So let me. Before we, we start with the questions, let me ask you, uh, what, what is the, the reasoning on these many names and nicknames you have? And how do we start <laughs> playing Magic and Pauper? Right, so the, the nicknames all just came about, uh, really only Cali Guys was the one that I basically made myself. Um, when I was in high school is when I started playing Magic Online in 2000 or 2001. And I was reading the Wheel of Time book series and we decided to make a, a clan because that was something that you could do on Magic Online. So we were the Satan clan because that was like the, the male magic in the in the book series. And Raken was like a dragon creature. So that was my, I just wanted to be the dragon creature, but then we put our clan name at the front of it. Because basically in all the, the MMO type things, you had your clan name in your handle. Okay. And then the Cali, the Cali Kai's thing, I just kind of made up because I liked it phonetically, how it sounded just rolling off the tongue. Oh, I was that's... like, oh, I'm going to make something up that doesn't sound stupid because all my handles were based off of like just weird stuff. I mean, instant messaging back in the day was like baby girl 2000 or like I cool see. guy 999, you know, yeah, like, all that. All that was kind of weak. Okay. So I just wanted to make something silly. Yeah. yeah it, and then it has the, a, a good sound. For... Yeah, it's easy to say. So I like it. And then uh, Jake ALS, my first name is Jacob or Jake, and then it's part of my last name. But when I started Twitter, I was just back in the day, like just joined Twitter. I was involved in a couple of different communities and then just, I kept it and then just let that be my my magic stuff. As far as like the content creation and like putting all my, all my stuff out there, it just sort of happened kind of accidentally. So let me first translate the, the first part of the answer that you said. And, and about the Kalikais, Uh, foi mais uma questão de como que o nome sou, então foi ele que mesmo que se deu esse nome. E o Saidin Haken foi meio que uma coisa de plans que tinha no Magic Online e ele fazia parte de um clã, tinha alguma coisa a ver com o MMO. But frankly, I, I think you, you need to answer things a little bit slowly for, for me to, oh, sure, and sure. And to understand. <laughs> Because sometimes you, you, you answer a lot of things and maybe my, right. my, my brain will not... Get all, Let me all give you a little bit at a time. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it can be. Okay. So, yeah. And how how do you start playing Magic and Pauper? I started playing Magic in high school, maybe uh, middle school. My friend had some paper cards and introduced me to flanking and horsemanship. I was very confused. That was many years ago, so... Então, no, ele foi apresentado no Magic por, por algumas habilidades, como flanquear e horsemanship, que eu não lembro como é que é em, em português, mas de qualquer maneira, very I think also banding. Banding, é, yeah, banding so também. My mind was formar exploding. We, we, we here say formar bando. It's a really weird, to, to, we, really weird way to say banding here. And yeah, and how do we start playing pauper? We played mostly limited on Magic Online, and we drafted a ton. Uh, I really didn't play constructed, and we played all through high school and a little bit of college, and then I stopped playing for a long time. And then after I had my son, um, he wouldn't sleep, so I had to hold him, and I started playing Magic Online again. I see. So, ele falou que Tava, que começou jogando ali o Magic Online com draft e tudo mais, e depois ele deu uma parada de jogar e voltou pro Pauper ali também, teve o filho, filho dele também, e essa questão de poder jogar ali junto com o filho bola. So, how, how, old your, how old is your son? He's six now. Oh, I see. So, when I, when I first started playing Magic Online again, um, Caleb Schur had just won SCG Syracuse with Gift Storm, which was 110 tickets or something. So I started playing that, and then I discovered Popper, and I played Is It Blitz and Boros Monarch mostly, and then I got completely dismantled. I got really beat 
playing Boris Monarch by a familiars player in paper locally. And then I discovered uh, 420 Dragon and Blood Pet, and then I started down the familiar strain. And then and then there was this card on the background, and he fell in love with it. Yeah. <laughs> então ele tava falando do começo do Pauper, que ele começou pelo Boros e também pelo Zet Blitz. E na verdade, antes ele, ele, tava, ele tinha começado com o Modern e com o Deck Storm, que era um deck UR. E o Caleb Sher, que é um especialista no R Storm, começou e depois ele foi pro pau para ele, começando até com Boros Monarca. Which is very surprising to me that you have started with Boros, because it, it kind of doesn't fit your, your playstyle nowadays. So it's kind well, of my, I think my playstyle is uh, someone who takes a lot of actions. And Boros Monarch is like, play the bird, pick up the thing. Yeah. Play the egg, draw a card, play the bird, pick up the thing. So that that always kind of was nice for me. Um, people know me more now as more of a combo player. But what's strange is that I don't really enjoy A plus B, that's it combos. And that's part of like the allure of Magic Online, I guess, where I'm just performing actions and over and over and over. I see. So, o, que, o que ele falou foi que... É, primeiro que ele começou... Ele começou com o Boros e com o, o Zet Blitz, mas depois foi pro W Familiars. Mas ele tava falando também que o Play... Eu até brinquei com ele que o estilo de jogo dele não, com, não combina... Né? Pelo menos eu tava achando que não combinava tanto com o Boros, mas ele explicou que sim, né? Porque o Boros tem muitas ações, né? Tu faz muitas coisas, faz core Sky Fisher, volta, então tem bastante a ver. E, e o que ele falou também bem interessante é que ele, hoje em dia, né, ele é bastante conhecido por jogar de combo, mas ele não gosta de combo simples, que é tipo, vamos supor, algo no sentido de Splinter Twin, que tu tem o Splinter Twin, vai lá e faz com uma criatura e ganha o jogo, A mais B, né? Então ele, basicamente, ele gosta de combos que envolvem várias linhas de, de, de combate diferentes, né? A lot of different lines of, of comboing, it's what right. you like. So, yeah, nice, nice to, <laughs> to know about this. Yeah. I played, um, I tried playing Pedal Festival when I discovered that on Magic Online, and then uh, it was semi-competitive, so I didn't play that very much, but I was playing a lot of familiars up through Blue Monday, and then after that, um, I played Jeskai Astrolabe and a little bit of just regular familiars in the Astrolabe meta, and then... Then after Astrolabe was Mystic Sanctuary, and then I started watching um, Birdman stream his Mystic Sanctuary familiars. Got pretty good at that, and then you know from there I just kind of started like taking off like a rocket, uh, playing a lot of Magic Online. Just finally made started making five O's with with Mystic Sanctuary, and then that was kind of my heyday. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so so there there was always a, a broken deck for you to play <laughs> through, through this year. And, right. And when it uh, was Mystic Sanctuary, I was able to place highly in a lot of uh, Magic Online tournaments. Então ele tava falando que jogou bastante aí na época do... Da, antes de ter sido Gush, banido, que ele jogava de Familiars nessa época. Depois ele jogou de Sky com Arkham's Astrolabe, que era uma carta extremamente forte. E depois, um tem, e depois ele começou a jogar mais de Familiars, também voltou pro Familiars um tempo depois. That's very nice. It's... It was good to, to know about you, about your, your magic backgrounds and... Okay, so let me first... So let me ask the first question. It was asked by Eduardo Zanella. It's uh, actually... Uh, it was all people that support the channel who send the, the questions. And mm -hmm. I, I'm going to read from one to five. So the first question is, how do you start playing Magic and how do you got into Pauper? I think you have explained a little bit about this, but you can, can say any, anything else if you want. Which archetype you like the most and what usually you, how usually you build decks and prepares for, for games? And actually, and, and then he... He thank you for your content and send you a, a big hug. So, <laughs> thank you yeah. very much. So how do you start um, got into Pauper? I think you have a, a already answered a, a little bit. And which archetype you like the most and how do you build and prepare for games? I think the thing that I like to, most, to do the most is to make it so that I've gone so far over the top of my opponent that nothing matters and that I'm just winning by a million billion points. <laughs> I see. 
that's really if you wanted to describe the way that I want to to do it, that's totally that. My uh, my friend from high school told me that I just want to ignore my opponent. I see. É, então, interessante, né? Ele falou que é o, a, a maneira que, como ele gosta mais de jogar é, tipo, ir a... a tipo, é uma expressão em inglês, né? Over the top. E seria, tipo assim, uhum. fazer algo, algo mais grandioso que o oponente está fazendo. Então, o oponente está fazendo ali, vamos supor, um Core Sky Fisher, alguma coisa, o Alicaz is playing Mold Drifter and Ephemerate and a lot of uh -huh. extra stuff and the opponent can't keep up with that. E, e daí ele tá basicamente... Falando que ele faz um monte de coisa e o oponente não consegue acompanhar, porque o que ele tá fazendo é muito, muito mais coisas em pouco tempo. Isso acaba surpreendendo bastante. And how do you prepare for, for the games? Well, so I think like my just going on the um, my favorite archetype, it's really spell slinging, like stormy style stuff. And familiars really does that with like play drifter, snap drifter, play drifter again, take a lot of uh, do a lot of things in one turn. Okay, so your practice with familiars and decks like that makes you prepared for games and magic in general. So for when I'm building a deck, I'm just what I do is I set the deck up the way that I think would work, and then I go into tournament practice and I play solitaire for like an hour or an hour and a half, or just run it and see how it feels. That's the step one. Então, interessante, né? Primeiro, a questão de se preparar para os jogos, ele fala que o Familiars acaba preparando ele para muitos dos decks que ele gosta de jogar, pelo estilo de jogo bem parecido, de fazer muitas coisas, né? Porque ele gosta também de decks Storm, que fazem muitas coisas e, né, e podem dar dano e tudo mais. E uma coisa interessante é que ele falou que ele joga no solitário, né? No, do Magic Online, que tu pode jogar ali contra si mesmo, para testar os decks, para ver como que ele sente com aquele deck primeiro, então... Very interesting. What, what you say about playing on solitaire to fill the deck and see if you like it or not? Actually, very... I think the main thing is just trying to figure out if it does what I want it to do, and if it does, then I can try to put it against opponent. That's like step one. Okay. So, então, o pr primeiro passo que ele faz é ver se o deck vai fazer o que é para o deck fazer, e esse seria o primeiro passo para colocar contra um um oponente de verdade, a real opponent, a real game of magic. So it, it was very nice to know about that. So the funny thing is that when I when I want to get into actually testing it against opponents, if I figure out that I didn't like it, I just bail right away. And I got lucky by placing well in tournaments a long time ago that I have a good bank on Magic Online. But if I thought it was going well, I go in and it goes poorly. I just I I, I owe one drop just so uh... many times. Oh, that's interesting. You, I, you I feel won the first diff... round and then you drop the, the, the whole thing. Well, zero one. Oh, okay. zero oh one. I see, I see. Because <laughs> one, one oh would be a bit crazier, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. I usually, I feel like I have uh, the stability to be able to do Magic Online. Not, I don't have, have to use it as a job, so I think that it's okay. really beneficial to, like, pursue avenues that I think are going to be interesting or are actually going to work. And if I get the feeling that it's not working immediately, I just, I just leave. I, see. I just so... don't, I don't like playing something that I'm not enjoying. All right. So let me question, question before I translate. Do you have a, a, a separate job uh, besides the grind? What do you... Yeah, I'm an, I'm an engineer. Oh, I see. I see. So do you work In a, in a part of the day and the other part you play magic and have fun and try to build decks. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. So very interesting. So let me translate for the people. Basicamente o que ele tá falando aqui, eu achei bem interessante, que ele falou que muitas vezes ele tá jogando as ligas e como ele, tipo, ele não depende do, do Magic Online como uma forma de renda, né? Que tem muita gente que depende do Magic Online como um grind e tudo mais. Principalmente pessoas aqui do Brasil, né? E ele fala que muitas vezes se ele tá no, numa liga, joga primeiro, o deck não foi bem, não gostou do deck, ele dropa a liga. Então ele tá 0-1 e já, já vai pra outra, já tenta montar alguma coisa diferente. Ele acredita que tem uma estabilidade também. E claro, né, jogando com decks mais competitivos, playing with competitive decks, you have a stability on your MTGO account, so you can right. play kind of fun, for fun decks and, and fun builds. 
E basicamente ele tava falando, ele também perguntei pra ele se ele tem um emprego fora do Magic Online, né? No caso, ele não utiliza o Magic Online como emprego, ele falou que é um engenheiro, né? E isso também ajuda pra ele poder, né, não precisar jogar sempre com um deck muito competitivo. So, it was very interesting to know that. And so, let me go to the second question of the video. Actually, we, we have answered a lot of questions throughout the video, but... <laughs> It's... Okay, so uh, if you could uh, change at at your will the ban list of Pauper banning or unbanning some cards, what would you change on the ban list? We always joke that ban list discussion comes down to ban the things I don't like and unban the things I like. So yeah. the things I like the most that are on the ban list that I know of are Galvanic Relay, High Tide, maybe Cloud of Fairies, stuff like that. Um, I don't think that those are specifically great to just add in, but I, you know, I always, I was saying like when Swiss beer was around, if we're dying on turn three, anyway, we might as well have options. <laughs> <laughs> like just let us die on turn three in a lot of different ways. Uh, That's what I want to do. I see. I just, I had so much fun playing Galvanic Relay. It was crazy. I just made tons of cash as well doing that. And like they said that the win rate was very high. So. Yeah, the, the deck was Keep crazy. Keep going for me. <laughs> the deck was crazy good on the format, especially with Weather the Storm, alongside with Weather the Storm, because we have a, a turn where you gain a lot of life and you exile a bunch of cards, and the next turn was just something very easy to, to kill someone. And now, now my decks are all built with, like, four Weather the Storm main deck and then work from there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, But I think that... Uh, so best... let me translate the first part. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, basicamente que ele falou que normalmente, né, tem aquela brincadeira que normalmente, assim, bane tudo que eu não gosto e desbane tudo que eu gosto. Então, uma... e três cartas que ele citou aqui que ele gosta muito, que ele queria ver de volta, né? Então, e ele até explicou que não necessariamente que ele acha que seriam boas opções pro formato. Seriam um Galvanic Relay, o High Tide e também... What was the other card? Cloud was... of Fairies. Cloud of Fairies, que desvira dois terrenos. E, basicamente, ele tava falando também, né, tava brincando que, como a Monastério tava matando todo mundo no turno 3, então, já que tá todo mundo morrendo no turno 3, então dá mais opções aí, então, como, uh, como, Cloud, como Galvanic Relay, por exemplo. So... Like in Legacy, you're gonna yeah. die turn 1. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. There's lots of decks that can just kill you on turn 1. Yeah. So, would you... So, let me ask you, would you ban something from the format in the moment? What do you think about that? It's very difficult to say if there's any on balance things that really need to go, but I just, I personally, I don't think that stuff like the monarchy or the initiatives should really be around. I feel like it was a leak to leave them in the format. We've seen a lot of people win with even like the gardens deck without initiative in it. It's not really necessary. And I think that it adds, it kind of detracts because every now and then as seen uh, this week, You can just slam initiative and turn one and win the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, which is fun. You were doing but... that. Yeah. <laughs> It's fun for one person. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For one, one, think... one, of, one of the players who, who have fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I think uh, there's been so many things that are more powerful. Uh, in the last year that it's very difficult to say if there's any balanced things that could be taken away. Um, yeah. And what you said about monarchy and initiative is very interesting because, yeah, th those mechanics weren't made for 1v1 play. So it's kind of a different design that, and there were more planes trying to hit you in combat damage. So in 1v1, it's kind of way easier to control what your opponent is doing in terms of mm -hmm. trying to kill the creatures or maybe, maybe fogging with prismatic strength. So it's kind of a kind of a, a strange strange mechanic in, to have in a 1v1 format. Então, basicamente, o que yeah. ele falou, uma coisa sobre... Eu, eu até né, perguntei, assim, de uma maneira mais direta sobre o que, que ele baniria. Ele falou... Eu, a gente falou sobre a questão do mon, a monarca, dianteira, né? Tipo, algumas coisas que ele trouxe ali como opções ali. É claro que ele deixou bem aberto também no sentido de de que né, tem muitas coisas para se pensar e tudo mais, então, mas ele trouxe também essa questão, e são designs ali que não foram feitos para 1v1, um um, né? Foram feitos para jogos multiplayer, então 
isso também acaba impactando também. So, okay, so good answer about the question. And I don't know who uh, asked that. I guess but... I forgot about Mystic Sanctuary too. That was that was okay. like my heyday. So okay, so, back. So you want <laughs> the okay? I see. I see. <laughs> então ele quer também Mystic Sanctuary de volta, além do, das três antes que ele pediu. So how about Peregrine Drake and a Temper of Yeah, Fissure? I didn't play at all during Peregrine Drake. Okay, so I, if you had, I just have with... no experience. Oh, I see. But okay. those two are both very very powerful cards too, right? But I think the Peregrine Peregrine Drake deck played out more like uh, Splinter Twin, so I don't know if that's really my style exactly. It's kind of like removal, 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 win the game, sort of yeah. like Gardens right now. Yeah, it was like the, uh, a little bit like that, for sure. Yeah. Então, é, a gente tava até brincando ali, né, porque ele quer todas as cartas mais roubadas de Storm, e daí a gente tava até falando que, né, tipo, ah, então traz Peregrine Drake e Temporal Fissure de volta, né. So let, let us go for the third question that was asked by Eduardo Giovanetti. Um, okay, so you play familiars. You are mm -hmm. a very known play familiars and you actually played very well. Actually, I need to say that because here in this question, the, he said more things about so the... He actually say a lot of more things about you playing familiars. Okay, so I'm actually opening Google Meet to just to so, show you something. Okay, so actually it's going to be a bit harder to. Okay, so he has actually said a little bit about your play style before. Uh -huh. So before we we are going to into familiar, so I, I translated in you played very well with familiar. So, but he actually uh, say a lot of good things about your play style with the deck that you play a lot of turns ahead and stuff like that. So it's actually very nice to see you playing familiars because of that. So, what do you recommend uh, when you when when someone, what your are your best recommendations for someone who would like to play with this kind of decks? And is there a kind of a standard list of familiars that is mm -hmm. a good way to a good starting point for someone that that is wanting to play the deck for the first time? And and do you change the Oh, for like paper versus online. Yeah, and do you have a, a a way to change the list to tuning for the mat to tune for the meta? How do you do that? It's actually, so my... the best. <laughs> I actually didn't translate the best way, but my main thing with familiars is that I think people approach it as a combo deck, and it's not really a combo deck. It's more of like. I guess it is a combo deck in that the combo is that you don't lose. So that's your main goal is to figure out how to not lose. Because you're an end game deck, you can eventually win no matter what, as long as you don't lose. So you have to know how your opponent is trying to win. And as long as you know that, then you can know how to not lose. And from there, you're setting up defenses with things like uh, God for Us Faithful, with uh, the Modern Age, which I specifically like to play. And then you're you're getting out of range, just like my Weather the Storm comment with a, a ton of life from Faithful or a couple of counter spells, uh, a very large amount of cards, and then eventually you're able to put together your finishing combo. Okay, it is something that I usually say on, on here on my content, and I I I grab this kind of not an opinion but but a philosophy of magic that I grab from LSV. And mm -hmm. he usually says that the win condition is overrated. And the win right. condition is the, the least important aspect of a deck, uh, like a combo deck. And as you said, your main priority in the games is not losing. And after you you establish that you will not lose this the, the game, you just find a way to, to win the game. And kind of a, a good way to, to see familiars. And yeah, how, how do you think about this statement from LSV? 
Yeah, I think I've learned from LSV. I, I don't know if I heard of that specifically, but I did used to listen to limited resources a lot where they talked about minimizing uh, your win conditions or they would just have a control deck with like one big creature that wins the game. And then I learned from Raptor 56 to minimize win conditions as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of all kind of from the same philo philosophy and way of thinking the this kind of decks. Então, basicamente, o que a gente tava falando, uma coisa, uma dica muito importante que ele falou sobre familiars é que ele dedica muita muita dedicação tanto na lista quanto na maneira como ele joga em não morrer. Então, ter formas defensivas de, de conseguir se defender e de conseguir se manter vivo e conseguir superar o que o oponente vai tentar né, colocar de ameaças para ganhar o jogo, porque depois que tu consegue não morrer, tu acha uma maneira de finalizar o jogo ali com a Murmuri Mystic ou com o Drifter batendo. Então é muito fácil de ganhar o jogo depois que tu não perdeu. E o, Mudri e o Familiars faz isso muito bem. E até uma coisa que a gente falou é sobre... Uma coisa que eu até falo aqui nos vídeos, para quem acompanha aqui o canal, é que a condição de vitória é algo um pouco superestimado. Então, o que isso quer dizer? Quer dizer que se o teu deck ele tem 99% de cartas excelentes e ele tem uma ou duas cartas que vão fazer tu vencer o jogo, não importa que é uma ou duas cartas, porque tu vai controlar o jogo, tu vai conseguir ter acesso a uma boa parte do teu deck e essa uma ou duas cartas, que no caso, usually in the familiar nowadays is Murmury Misk, the, the main win condition to the, deck, to the deck, right? Yeah, that's... So... In my list, I like to play the Modern Age, and I pair that with Deep Analysis. So that way we have four 2-3 flyers and four 2-2 flyers for a total of uh, 16 damage. Okay, so <laughs> so you don't you don't use Murmur Misky in your lists? Well, I played recently a, uh, a cantrip-based list with Murmur Mystic, which was pretty fun. But um, I really prefer the Modern Age because Familiars, um, when you don't have a lot of threats, your opponents can use their removal spells on key pieces. So like your Familiar, your Archaeomancer, even your Murmuring Mystics. And when you're playing the Modern Age, you're providing a threat that they have to actually manage. So it's stretching their resources. And it also allows you to play Deep Analysis because with the loot, you can use it early or late and uh, provides you a lot of flexibility. Yeah, and one thing I, I like about the Modern Age is because you play the, the card, and then two turns later, it turns into a creature. So uh, by, by this time, you have ways to defend it and maybe counter some, some removal and something like that. So it's kind of very... How, how can I say that? It's very... Convenient that the creatures mm -hmm. comes from the uh, goes to to the board two turns after. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of because you have mana available, I guess, at that point to yeah, do stuff with it. Yeah. Exactly. You have so, to tap out for it. Yeah. So it's very hard to do with card. Então uma coisa que ele tava falando aqui é que ele não tem utilizado muito a Murmuri Mystic ultimamente. Ele tem usado quatro Modern Age, que aquela que aquela saga, né? Compra uma, descarta uma, pode descartar inclusive a Deep Analysis, que ele também está utilizando, e ele meio que utiliza a Modern Age e o Drifter como as formas ali de finalizar o jogo. So, and actually, Modern Age and Mood Drifter are not only win conditions, because they also make your gameplay works, because they draw cards. Exactly. So, so it's kind of... Uh, and it's, it's kind of a way to have no win condition uh, that, that is solo uh, win condition. Kind of uh, a, a very good way to approach the deck. Então, uma coisa que eu acho que é importante que a gente estava falando, né, sobre essa questão de ter pouca condição de vitória, é que nesse caso do, da, do deck dele, ele usa, né, as quatro Modern Age e quatro Mood Drifter, que se tu for ver, não é nem uma condição de vitória somente, né, porque é uma criatura que ataca com voar e tudo mais, mas é uma carta que... são duas cartas que compram, né, tanto a Modern Age quanto o Mood Drifter, então é, vai muito nessa ideia de usar o mínimo de condição de vitória possível, eu acho que é uma coisa muito importante também, tá. So, yeah, so... Yeah, the, I, I think it's I think it's been answered. So thank you, Eduardo Giovanetti, for the question. So, okay. So, uh, do would you like to see some changes from from Pauper, especially for familiars? 
And what would you un unban or maybe downgrade from common or rare to, to common? The two best uh, unbans for familiars would be High Tide or Mystic Sanctuary, because both of those you can combo off really easily. Just Mystic Sanctuary, you can win on turn five pretty consistently. Um, and then it allows you to play a zero Archaeomancer if you want, and you can have a lot more action spells in your deck, which makes it much, much stronger. Um, the deck was pretty streamlined during Sanctuary times. And then with, uh, with the High Tide, you can play High Tide, and then with a Familiar in play, and you have a single High Tide active, you can snap and replay Archaeomancer forever. So with a, fami with a Faithful in play, that would be infinite life. And then with two High Tides, you make infinite blue mana, which could draw to your deck and then do whatever you feel like doing at that point to win the game. Yeah, yeah. É, então, é. basicamente, a questão de, de, né, de ambans, né? Ele falou duas cartas, que é o High Tide e também o Mystic Sanctuary, né? Que são duas cartas ali que ajudariam muito a combar facilmente, né? Duas cartas extremamente poderosas no formato Pauper. And do you have some cards in mind for downgrades for the deck? Um, I know Raptor 56 was really interested in playing with Eternal Witness, because then you can play blue-green, and then you you can just snap and replay Eternal Witness for snap, so it kind of takes over a bunch of the stuff or play Bant that way. Um, as far as other downgrades, I don't I don't really know. The I always joke that we should just downgrade Tendrils of Agony so I could play that again. I see. Just add another Storm card. Okay. Okay. Então, ele tava falando sobre essa questão de downgrades, né? Ele falou sobre Tendrils of Agony, mas, mas não sei se exatamente pro Familiars. Mas aí ele falou também sobre Eternal Witness. Que é uma carta verde, which is a green card, but it's actually kind of good because you can reduce the cost of Eternal Witness with Familiars. But well, wouldn't be the... wouldn't be very... Uh, the, the mana base wouldn't be very hard with Eternal Witness? Yeah. It would go into the green, white, blue deck with Utopia Sprawl and Snap, the Rainbow Familiar style deck, and would take the place of Archaea Mancer. Ah, oh, I see. Então ele tava falando que poderia ter o Eternal Witness, que é aquela que é basicamente um Archaeomancer que busca qualquer carta do cemitério, só que ela custa duas verdes, né? Só que daí iria para uma linha que usa Utopia Sprawl, uma linha que a gente já tá acostumado a ver, assim. Não tanto, mas é uma linha... Uma, uma, uma linha alternativa de, de Familiars, que é justamente o Rainbow Familiars, que usa o Topi Pro. So, very interesting. So, let us go for the last question. Ok, I, I think hmm. you have answered a little bit about that. So, what, which tips would you give to someone who would like to play with a control deck like Familiars, or is a beginner in the Pauper or in Magic? Well, I play. think that part of the reason why I'm, I'm basically just only play Pauper is that I found that format knowledge is the thing that allows you to actually be able to win matches. And I used to play a lot of Limited where I had a full grasp of the entire set. And I just don't anymore. It's hard to get involved in that. So the, the most important thing to be good at any format is to have a lot of experience with what can happen so that you can build your game plan around it. Interessante. Uma coisa que ele falou é que independente assim, né, tipo, se vai jogar de controle, de familiars, uma coisa que ele recomenda muito é que a pessoa se familiarize com o formato, tenha muita experiência com o formato para saber o que que vai acontecer no jogo, porque as as partidas, né, I'm kind of Amplifying your answer. But as partidas, elas meio que elas vão sempre para um padrão muito parecido, né? Então meio que tu consegue, jogando bastante, tendo muita experiência, jogando muitas partidas, tu vai meio que vendo que as, as coisas elas ficam repetitivas e elas ficam fáceis de prever depois de um tempo. So it's kind of what, what I was saying is that the, the standard of plays is oh, at, some, at some point. Uh, when you play a lot, it gets repetitive, and you know exactly what, what is going to happen in a game, like you said, kind of. Right. With with Popper, because it doesn't move around as much from well or had not in the past, it was also easier to become familiar with the play patterns. 
and stuff like with fairies being very popular for a long time, you know to play around spells that are sprite, stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, and actually, uh, I I I really like playing, trying to my best to play around spells that are sprite. It's a very a very cool sub game from our performance. I think that the, the fairies player is just sitting there with a the sprite in their hand, waiting for the moment. Yeah, and you can you can always bait them. Yeah, uh, okay, here you yeah. go. Yeah, and it's funny because sometimes you can make the perfect play for them to to play the stutter, and you you make the the perfect play for bait them with the stutter, and you when you have something like a snuff out or maybe a bolt to to kill the, the stutter, so it's very very cool way to, to play around it. Então a gente tava falando que tem alguns padrões que podem acontecer no formato, né? como por exemplo, a Spell Stutter Sprite, que é uma carta que ficou muito presente no formato, então a gente tinha que saber exatamente como jogar em volta dela, porque ela tinha padrões de jogos que eram difíceis de prever para quem tava começando, mas depois de um tempo dava para pegar bem. And so, uh, the, the last question, would you recommend familiars for a beginner play, uh, uh, someone who on the format, and which is the the three best decks for all? Our opinion oh, right now. Right now, the best decks? Well, I think that you can start playing familiars and be good enough to hold your own. That it's okay to be a beginner doing that, as long as you know that the deck is full of decision points. And the most important thing is to just take decisions. So don't sit there and agonize about what's going to happen. Just start doing things because familiars has so much power. You don't have to be perfect. Whereas with something like mono blue fairies, you have to get exactly correct. I see. Okay. Very interesting. So which are, are the other two best decks? Um, the best decks in the format right now, I think that the most powerful decks are probably something like Glitters, just because it just has the, the highest ceiling. And then I think one of the better um, control decks is Gardens. People have been playing that a lot. I really like Familiars. I don't know if it's like the best position deck. I think Affinity is one of the better decks in the format, if not one of the best decks still. And Familiars is kind of rough against... Um, Grixis Affinity, and then people are playing Terror of all sorts, and Terror is also kind of um, difficult for familiars to play against, which is why I'm playing Circle of Protection. É, eu perguntei os três melhores decks, que para ele é o Familiars, né? Ele até falou que o Familiars é um deck que ele recompensa muito por decisões, né? Então é um deck que se a pessoa né, quiser focar, vai ser um ótimo deck no metagame. Também falou em decks com glitters, né? Que pode ser tanto o Azores quanto o Jaskai, né? Principalmente, atualmente. Também o Golgari Gardens, ele, ele diz. Os melhores decks. E o Familiars, eles têm dificuldade contra os decks de Terror e também contra a Grixis Affinity. And would you recommend the Familiars for, a, for someone starting the format? Generally, people say that if you're starting the format, you should play proactive decks. So maybe not, but you can just go ahead and check out my YouTube channel and see a lot of primers and past gameplay. You can get a handle of, like I said, what are the things that you could expect to have happen? And then I think you could be relatively successful. Yeah, it's uh, a great timing for a, a ad here because <laughs> Cali guys has a channel. Cali guys tem um canal no YouTube que ele mostra várias partidas no Familiars, então Talvez, assim, para começar no formato, talvez seja melhor um deck um pouco mais proativo, talvez um logo, talvez um monohead, mas, né, tem o canal dele ali para poder pegar as situações do deck, então, conheço ali. How, how is your channel on YouTube? Alicais? Yeah. Uh, Alicais, and people love your, uh, your channel, and, and people are saying a lot of good things about your videos, And people I appreciate that. always always are sharing and uh, and having with thoughts about your lists and about your your plays that you your channel. Thank you very Thank much you. and congratulations as well. Thank you. It's really amazing that uh, people want to see what I'm doing and I just I really appreciate that a lot. I started making videos just because people wanted to see what I was doing with Mystic Sanctuary familiars. 
and that just kind of came out now and then. And then I was playing some weird decks, so I just had videos of that. Just kind of grew organically, and then someone challenged me to kind of put the effort in, and it's just exploded over the past year, which is awesome. É, então ele tava falando que ele começou ali com o Mystic Sanctuary, mas ultimamente ele tem trazido bastante conteúdo novo e, e tava muito legal. And very, very cool channel on the play videos. So, yeah, that's... that's I'd always be excited if I can get a new silly combo deck and it actually <laos> works. Yeah, and you, and you are actually doing it. And you... <laughs> <laughs> There are a lot of silly combos that you are trying and having su success with. Very cool. Tá tentando vários combo doido e tá funcionando muito bem, né? E... And, yeah, do, do you have any final message to someone and to somebody? Do you... Hey? Uh, thanks, everybody, for the support on the YouTube. And uh, if you ever feel like you want to get in touch with me, you can uh, hit me up on Twitter or on Discord. I'm relatively active on there. If you want to check out more about the decks that I already play, I have a Patreon on like the detailed sideboard guys and stuff. It's obviously it's no pressure. <laughs> okay. And then uh, I put a like a deck donation thing, which I've gotten a couple, but uh, it's always fun to try out new things. I got like went down the rabbit hole with the treasure storm for a little bit. <laughs> oh, I see treasure storm. Yeah, it, it was was one of the decks that people were talking a lot. Your your treasure, yeah, that was from a, storm a person deals. that's relatively local to me, uh, Moist Moose, and he he plays at the local paper events that are like an hour and a half away from me. And he was really hyped on on playing that with Marut and was really excited when Marut came to Magic Online, so I appreciate that. Oh, that's nice. Who cards? And then I definitely shout out to everybody that's been involved in the Familiars Discord to help me out like to grow as a player as well. Okay. If he yeah. wants to go in there. That's where we do most of our brewing, our, our spiky brewing. <laughs> oh, nice. So, shout outs, shout outs were given from Calicais. Então, basicamente, ele mandou um salve para todo mundo que acompanha o canal. Tem o um Patreon dele. Quem quiser falar com ele, Twitter ou Discord. Ele também mandou um salve para toda a galera do Discord do Familiars, que tem um, um Discord só para o Familiars, que a galera conversa bastante. And yeah, that's there's it. also a, a pinned video on the YouTube that explains how to play familiars and especially on Magic Online for speed. Okay, so you have a, a video uh, explained for, for beginners. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very important. Ele tem um vídeo também para quem tá começando aí com o deck. Então fica aí o, mais uma dica aí muito boa. So thank you very much. And you, I see thank you, you for having me. Yeah, yeah, thank you for Good to talk to exactly, you. exciting to talk with me here in the channel. And yeah, I hope to play with more times and talk with you times. Sounds great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.